Sustainable consumption and production is about promoting resource and energy efficiency, sustainable infrastructure and providing access to basic services, green and decent jobs and a better quality of life for all. Its implementation helps to achieve overall development plans, reduce future economic, environmental and social costs, strengthen economic competitiveness and reduce poverty. Did you know that households consume 29% of global energy and contribute to 21% of resultant carbon dioxide emissions? However, if people worldwide switched to energy efficient light bulbs, the world would save US $120 billion annually. Water pollution is also a pressing issue that needs a sustainable solution. We are polluting water faster than nature can recycle and purify water in rivers and lakes. So how can we help? How can businesses help? We need to find new solutions that enable sustainable consumption and production patterns. We need to have a better understanding of environmental and social impacts of products and services is needed, both of product life cycles and how these affected by use within life cycles. Identifying hotspots within the value chain where interventions have the greatest potential to improve the environmental and social impact of a system as a whole is a crucial first step. Businesses can also use their innovative power to design solutions that can both enable and inspire individuals to lead more sustainable lifestyles, reducing impacts and improving well-being. The per capita material footprint of developing countries grew from 5 metric tonnes in 2000 to 9 metric tonnes in 2017, representing a significant improvement in the material standard of living. Most of the increase is attributed to a rise in the use of non-metallic minerals, pointing to growth in the areas of infrastructure and construction. For all types of materials, developed countries have at least double the per capita footprint of developing countries. In particular, the material footprint for fossil fuels is more than four times higher for developed than developing countries. By 2018, a total of 108 countries had national policies and initiatives relevant to sustainable consumption and production. According to a recent report from KPMG, 93% of the world's 250 largest companies in terms of revenue are now reporting on sustainability, as are three quarters of the top 100 companies in 49 countries, which is fabulous. So what are the targets? 93% of the world's 250 largest companies are now reporting on sustainability, as mentioned. They need to implement the 10-year framework of programs on sustainable consumption and production. All countries taking action, with developed countries taking the lead, taking into account the development and capabilities of developing countries. By 2030, achieve the sustainable management and efficient use of natural resources. By 2030, halve per capita global food waste at the retail and consumer levels and reduce food losses along production and supply chains, including post-harvest losses. By 2020, achieve the environmentally sound management of chemicals and wastes throughout their life cycle in accordance with agreed international frameworks and significantly reduce their release to air, water and soil in order to minimise their adverse impact on human health and the environment. By 2030, substantially reduce waste generation through prevention, reduction, recycling and reuse. We need to encourage companies, especially large and transnational companies, to adopt sustainable practices and to integrate sustainability information into their reporting cycle. We need to promote public procurement practices that are sustainable in accordance with national policies and priorities. By 2030, we need to ensure that people everywhere have the relevant information and awareness for sustainable development and life cycles in harmony with nature. We need to support developing countries to strengthen their scientific and technological capacity to move towards more sustainable patterns of consumption and production. We need to develop and implement tools to monitor sustainable development impacts for sustainable tourism that creates jobs and promotes local culture and products. We need to rationalise inefficient fossil fuel subsidies that encourage wasteful consumption by removing market distortions in accordance with national circumstances, including by restructuring taxation and phasing out those harmful subsidies where they exist to reflect their environmental impacts, taking fully into account the specific needs and conditions of developing countries and minimising the possible adverse impacts on their development in a manner that protects the poor and the affected communities. So how does a large multinational transform the way business thinks? 
Dr Leora Black is a Principal in Sustainability Services Team at Deloitte Australia, where she leads social sustainability and corporate social responsibility engagements. She is one of Australia's leading authorities on stakeholder and community engagement, human rights, social licence and extended corporate reporting. Dr Black is also a sought after speaker and facilitator who has presented best practice in social responsibility and measurement to business leaders and academics at conferences and seminars worldwide. She is also the author of The Social Licence to Operate, Your Management Framework for Complex Times, 2013. Dr Black is an ambassador of the Modern Slavery Act and continues to advocate for the Act within her current organisation. The Australian Government is likely to introduce a Modern Slavery Act in 2018, following two inquiries in 2017. The proposed Act will require organisations with more than $50 to $100 million in revenue to provide a public report on their actions to discover and fix any modern slavery problems in their operations or supply chains. We welcome Dr Black. The Australian uh, Commonwealth Modern Slavery Act is really a world leading piece of legislation. Um, it builds directly on the UK Modern Slavery Act that was um, instituted in 2015, but our Modern Slavery Act takes the same type of reporting requirements and um, strengthens them a little. The purpose of the Act is to encourage business to use its influence to stamp out modern slavery in operations and supply chains. The Act specifically asks businesses of a certain size, over $100 million consolidated revenue in Australia, to issue a public report describing their operations and supply chains, what they're doing to identify risks of modern slavery, what they're doing to address those risks if they find them, and how effective their practices are at uh, stamping out these risks. And it's a great piece of legislation because in order for companies to be able to report effectively on modern slavery risks in their own supply chains, they'll need to go and ask their suppliers some questions about what they're doing to identify and mitigate modern slavery. And for those suppliers to be able to answer appropriately, they'll have to go and ask their suppliers. So there's a domino effect um, which really um, encourages business to use its influence throughout the supply chain to make a positive impact on this most egregious of human rights abuses. Well, I think it will have a big impact on um, improving the sustainability of consumption and production because it will require businesses to ask questions about human rights. And uh, so clearly it will make an impact in those areas, but in the broader um, context of uh, sustainable consumption and production, it's very difficult, I think, for uh, a, a, a business that um, has integrity and holds its principles high to say, well, we'll look at just this, but we won't worry about any other aspects of sustainability or responsibility or the broader issues of sustainable consumption. So I would hope that um, this change will encourage uh, businesses to think um, more in a more uh, granular way about uh, what they're doing um, in their supply chains. So I think it will have a good effect, um, but it's not the only initiative designed to encourage more sustainable production and consumption. Uh, we have an ISO standard uh, that now uh, gives guidelines for, on, for organisations on how to do that and there are many sector specific initiatives which are quite compatible with uh, the ISO 20,400 guidance on sustainable um, supply chains uh, as well as with the sustainable development goals. I think awareness is growing but off a very low base and there are still many, many business leaders and managers who are surprised to find that modern slavery even exists, that it's actually a thing in our world today. They believe that modern slavery or well, slavery went out 200 years ago um, in the United States uh, and uh, if it exists at all today it's small and um, it's over there, it's not here. So they think of it as, as uh, remote. So I am still finding people who are quite surprised to f understand that it even exists and is an issue. 
but uh, uh, awareness is growing, um, particularly uh, amongst um, procurement and sustainability people who are both taking the message to their executive teams and boards uh, that this is important. So, uh, and I do believe that the government uh, is going to um, implement some awareness raising campaigns as well. So we need awareness, not just that it's a problem, but we also need awareness on how to spot problems of modern slavery uh, in different industries. And we need to create awareness of um, the types of um, actions that organisations can take to make a positive impact on, on this issue. And I think we also need to raise awareness in business about uh, the value of transparency in this respect, that it is okay uh, to, if you find instances of modern slavery, to talk about the fact that you have found these instances and what you're doing about it, and that um, it is better to actually disclose these challenges than to try and hide it away and not uh, and, and figure well we'll we'll talk about it when we've fixed it because that may be um, a multi-year process. It may be a long time coming, and it's a very very difficult problem to shift. So I do think that um, there, there are lots of different types of awareness that business needs to bring to bear uh, on the issue. Some are better prepared than others. Uh, those companies that have already been reporting under the UK Modern Slavery Act since 2015 are, are the best prepared or those companies that are um, subsidiaries of global companies that have already started to address the issues are better prepared. But the vast majority of Australian businesses are not yet well enough prepared. Uh, they don't know where to start, where to look, um, they're not sure what to do. So we do hope that um, by the time the first reporting requirements are published in 2020, uh, that uh, more businesses will have a better understanding uh, of what they need to do. But it will take, I think, some time, in fact, some years, for there to be really wide, uh, widespread, broad-based understanding of the nature of the problem and the types of actions that need to be taken to address the problem. Well, ultimately responsibility rests with the executive leadership team and the board and modern slavery statements will need to be signed by a person representing the board and the executive leadership team. But in terms of the day-to-day -day management response to these problems, it will be something that needs to cut across several different functional areas and operational areas of any particular organisation. So first and foremost, procurement needs to be at the table. Sustainability needs to be at the table. And the other kinds of um, leaders that we expect to be involved may come from operations, they may come from the legal team, they may come from strategy, they may come from uh, compliance. It depends on the business, um, but at the very minimum, uh, what we would say to organisations is it needs executive level and board support and uh, we must have at the table both procurement and sustainability experts. I think any organisation is unlikely to be effective in their response if they leave it to just one department um, and say, well, it's your job, get on with it, because one department cannot solve all of the problems. There needs to be a, a movement of mindsets and attitudes and understanding, not just a set of tasks that need to be done to address issues of modern slavery and human rights abuses. Uh, so um, I think the consequences, um, if an organisation were to put it in one pocket or another, uh, would be felt fairly quickly and an organisation will need to rethink and recalibrate if that's uh, what they do. But I, I, that being said, I don't think that there is one foolproof formula for every organisation to say this is how you do it, this is who needs to be responsible and how you do it. I think each organisation needs to respond to these requirements given it their own context and their own um, strategy and organisational structure. But it does need to be um, a, a cross-organisation approach, a cross-functional approach, a cross-organisation approach to really be effective.
Deloitte is taking the Modern Slavery Act very seriously. Of course, it applies to us as well as to most of our clients. Uh, with our clients, uh, we are talking to them extensively about the risks um, and how to identify risks and helping them work it into their business as usual processes, often working with strategy and procurement and sustainability teams. So we have a range of services to help companies get to grips with this. We're also doing a lot to raise awareness, holding events and publishing information about it because we think education is terribly important. And of course, our own people are getting organised to ensure that Deloitte is able to report appropriately on the Modern Slavery Act as well.